got a whooping 200 mbps that's directly 6x that's six times the speed of just plugging it into the usb 3.0 stick in the 3.0 port in the back the one i installed today Hi, welcome to Too Far Tech. Amazon decided to deliver some of my items today, which I had ordered just a couple of days back. And it's nothing specific to our standard project. This is something related to my home PC on which I do the rendering and I do my work and I do my gaming and all those stuff. Now, considering I'm building all these gaming PCs, my own machine is a very old uh, Mac, which I recently um, bought back from the dead <laughs> I say that bought back from the dead because it was a completely dead Mac and I'm not much of a Mac user I mean before this I've almost not used Mac in my entire life of IT or working with PCs I've never used Mac the good thing about it it comes with dual processors and a 64 uh, GBs of RAM that was updated and also I went ahead and upgraded the graphics card to the GTX 1080 so it can pretty much play all the latest games and it can do a lot of stuff but uh, the problem is it's based on an old intel architecture back in the days when there was no usb 3.0 now i have a lot of devices like the usb devices where i take backup i move a lot of uh, data here and there and i have the problem of getting data in fast and out in and out so there had to be some kind of solution and that's where uh, this guy comes in i i, I looked everywhere uh, for a, a built-in PCIe 3.0 or 3.1 uh, PCIe card. Now I'm going to unbox this one and see what's inside so we can uh, we can know what this is all about. Before I open this, let's uh, check the Amazon site. Uh, this is based on an NEC 720201 uh, chipset. It's a four port so over here if you go down the funny part is i read the reviews and somebody similar like me uh, from dubai had brought uh, for a mac 5.1 which is actually that machine and he installed it it does detect detected by mac but none of the device worked so i believe he probably tried that in the mac os but i'm going to i'm only running windows i completely removed mac from this uh, mac os from this one and it's just running uh, totally windows how i'm going to do some bench test on to see if this really works first of all and also see if can if it can really provide the kind of bandwidth i'm looking for this usb 3.1 devices the external hard drive and this usb key this is a standard 2.0 key but i'm going to see if there is any kind of difference plugging it over in the standard port versus the the usb 3.0 so i'm going to open it as you can uh, look at this content all right so we have a user manual here i probably need a microscope to look at it let that be there okay so we have um i'm not sure if it's gonna it's gonna be needed or not and here we have the the neatly packed in the shielded cover so it looks pretty good and okay uh, the build quality seems to be okay and these are going to be plugged in here for the extra power that is supposed to come out of this and let's see what else is in there so we have uh, these two screws and this is for the low rise board we won't be using that and we have a driver disc can see here I have my GPU here taking up two slots and I do have one two three slots full full length slots out there I'm gonna slightly move because it's still working and it already has three hard drives plugged in we have the unit here and I better connect the set power to it because I need to be powering some hard drives on this so 
these are the uh, this is one of the cable that was provided with it which should be useful because there's only SATA power I just pulled out the DVD drive looking for a SATA power and I found this one but there's no way as of now unless I do some serious mods that I can bring them into this compartment because this compartment is completely sealed and I pulled out the hard drive from here to see if there is any way and that's not gonna work and that's when I realized that the whole SATA power right exists exists right over here I have an additional setup power here. I'm not sure if the camera is picking it up, but the problem is it's similar to this uh, connector here. It's one piece. It's not like a separate. It's not like a separate setup power and the data, which is uh, the smaller one. So here, this is the connector that I need to plug in there. I'll give you a demo here. So if I try to plug it here, it wouldn't go in because uh, this pin is actually supposed to go in here. Uh, so it seats properly. So it's like a seating mechanism uh, But this pin right now is a showstopper for me because it's not letting me go in there and do the job So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take my cutter and I'm going to chop it off. See this this pin. I'm going to take this guy I'm going to see if I can cut it Oops, it's gone. So let's uh, do a demo. So I need to plug it here Yep, yeah, we have a solution plug is there it has to be this way yep we are successful it's sitting but it's not very smooth yep it's uh, sitting but it's uh, kind of loose in there I'm gonna go and see what I can do about it and I'm gonna plug this card in and plug the connector now I have uh, managed to put this back put these back I've managed to plug it I installed the card here I've got the lights from the phone this one is the card and the power is connected above it the power is connected deep inside there into one of the ports for the hard drive here anyways I'm not going to have a fourth hard drive so let's see the moment of truth whether this would actually turn on after installing that uh, one so I'm gonna press the power button okay there's some activity since the PC decided to start up now we have some colors going on in there. It's time to install the driver. But I checked in the system, it didn't show up as something uh, that didn't get detected. So let's put this disk into the drive and see. Not sure if that drive would work because I've never used it and it's uh, 10 year old almost. Okay. Fortunately it works. Yeah, NEC. We have the driver here. I prefer copying it here so that I would know if something goes wrong. I don't want the drivers to stop working half the way that the disk can on them, right? It's always good to copy to your desktop. And uh, let's try to do the installation. Okay, it's going through. It changes. Okay. Next. I agree. So here we are. Okay. Did the system freeze? Okay, something is happening. Okay, finish. All right, yeah, I was right. That is the controller here. Now we just installed the actual driver, not the Microsoft one. And if you check the driver details, yeah, you will see the actual company that makes it, not the Microsoft driver. So one thing you need to know about this, especially in the Mac and some of the machines I've noticed, for some of the items, Microsoft defaultly installs the driver, but it actually doesn't work. One of the things I've noticed in this PC is the actual wireless, uh, the Broadcom wireless, uh, here there is an option. I'm just going out of the subject, but if I were to choose, if I were to choose the driver as Microsoft default one that would be installed, actually this drive Wi-Fi would work, but it would be very slow and it would get disconnected throughout. So this is something I realized recently. So it's always best to install, even if it is an old driver, to install the correct version. As you can see, it's a 2011 version, which I took it from the boot camp of the Mac. Okay, now since we have this here, we are going to do some tests. Okay, there is an LED light on the board. I'm, it means it must be working fine. These are the tests I'm going to do. This, as I explained before, is a 3.0 SAN disk. You can see it's a 128 GB drive, Extreme Pro USB. And this is the one I brought today along with the card. It's a 16 GB cruiser blade the cheapest sandisk usb 2.0 16 
and this is the Seagate one terabyte hard drive and I believe this is a 5400 uh, hard drive the Seagate expansion but it's a 3.0 drive so I'm going to plug all of this over here this is the standard USB port the USB 2.0 I'm going to plug it here each one of them and I'm going to run a crystal mark test which is this one over here the crystal disk mark I'm sorry so the crystal disk mark I'm going to select the profile as the real world performance I just want to see how it performs we're just going to look at the sequential part actually I'm going to put in a 1 GB uh, file for the for the bigger drives and use the smaller 512 for the 16 GB drive and I'm going to run this test so I'm going to plug it here the USB each of them here and then I'm going to plug them in the back and I'm going to do this test again so we will see what happens after the test so here we go uh, let me do this one the 3.0 bring it here and I need to close this and open it again just to be on the safer side and to make sure it works so it's been detected here as you can see as this drive I'm going to do is click off and it's going to take some time because it's going to prepare the one the file and then it's going to push through this so we have finished all the benchmarks uh, I have benchmarked this one could not take the 1 GB as I expected so I have to use a smaller size of 512 MB file and we have the collective report uh, here each individual and I'm going to show you the collective report let's talk about the this is the external USB 3.0 hard drive plugged into the USB 2.0 if you plug this in the front you're getting a maximum read of 35 M megabyte per second and write of 31 megabyte per second now if you take this from the front and plug it to the back USB you get a speed of 120 and 116 as you can see the jump is substantial jump right here by just plugging this back into the new USB 3.0 but this is a 5400 rpm uh, hard drive so it's going to reach its limit uh, through the mechanical the mechanical drive limit the next we did is we use this drive it's a pretty high-end unit the extreme pro and we plugged it into the usb 2.0 in the front and we got a similar number as you can see this looks like the the bottleneck of the 2.0 protocol nevertheless as you can see here 34 and when I plug this in the back side, I got a whopping 200 Mbps. That's directly 6x. That's six times the speed for just plugging it into the USB 3.0 stick in the 3.0 port in the back. The one I installed today. Uh, this is an old test that I've done before. I plugged this 2.0 in the 2.0 and I got this result. And then I plugged this 2.0 in the back and I got this result. Now here it clearly say 512 MB and these are 1 GB files. It doesn't matter. The thing is, this is the bottleneck of the of the 2.0 versus the 3.0. So we have a collective uh, information. Money well spent on the 3.0 PCI postcard, the one that was here. The actual price is 149 and I got a discount up to 59 dirhams. So thank you for watching. And You'll see more of such stuff coming from Tufa Tech. You have a wonderful day.